Hey Carters, welcome back to the YouTube channel, NorCal Carters. And if you haven't done it yet, please hit like and subscribe for more content and it helps my channel uh, keep going. I'm actually trying to get to a thousand subscribers to unlock live videos. Then I'll have more flexibility to do live uh, race events or um, other possibilities but I need a thousand subscribers. So if you value the content, please like and subscribe, share with your racing friends. Uh, I also accept donations. So at the bottom uh, of the video, you can actually click on the PayPal link for a donation. So if you ever watched one of my videos and it was helpful or it builds you out of a jam, uh, donation is appreciated. Again, we just, we're gonna keep expanding uh, the videos and the webpage, etc. So NorCalCarters.com. Uh, hit like and subscribe on our YouTube channel and also uh, like our Facebook page. So that's my plug and let's get to this video. Makuni 28 millimeter carburetor. Now this is off of a motorcycle but this has been, been modified for cart racing applications for a pump round fuel system. So let's get to it. Again Makuni 28 millimeter flat side carburetor and this one's been modified for a pump round system so if you don't know what a pump round system is very simply stated the fuel goes into the carb right here goes in from the fuel pump into the carb into the float bowl the scavenger tube basically is set at a specific height inside the float bowl which we'll get to here in a bit so the scavenger tube sucks the excessive fuel out to maintain the fuel level inside the float bowl. This tube is your return back to the tank. So I also did another video on the pump round with some more tips on specifically the plumbing and the nipples and all that. So go check that video out. I'll put a link below to uh, that video. And um, again, I don't want to be too redundant in these videos. So this video is the anatomy of a pump round carburetor. So this is not a stock carburetor. There are no floats, there's no needle and seat, there's no needle valve. It's strictly a pump around and we'll get to that with the fuel cell foam and splash plates, etc. So outside, fuel inlet from your fuel pump. Scavenger tube, so this is your return line back to the tank. From the tank, back to the tank. And this tube is gonna vary depending on who modified the carburetor. There's, um, this one's actually one of the original pump round carbs. It's, it utilizes heavier steel plates, a heavier tube. Some of the do-it-yourselfers use a um, non-fuel resistant epoxy so it eventually comes loose. Or these plates are a lot thinner and uh, it allows flex in these tubes. But this is one of the original pump rounds, uh, likely built by PSR uh, back in the 90s or early 2000. So again, inlet, OEM inlet, this is still your fuel supply. This is your fuel return back to the tank. And it makes cool sounds, and I'm being stupid. So, choke, down is off, up, is on, down, off, up, on. So if it's a cold morning, first time starting for the day, pull the choke up um, and your engine should fire up right away. Now, this is your idle screw. So there's a jam nut that you need to break loose. Then this screw is threaded into the car body and the end of this screw makes contact with the slide inside and that will raise your slide. So the more you turn it in, the more the slide will raise, creating a higher idle. Now most racers don't run an idle uh, because the idle, what happens when you get off the gas and it's still idling, it's gonna wanna keep continuing to pull and the idle or the engine then drops down in RPMs much slower. So you end up with the engine pulling you into the corner farther than you may anticipate and is not as consistent. So most 
racers and engine builders set these carburetors up to not idle. So when you're off the gas, the engine tries to decelerate and it's a little bit more predictable. Now, if you're a recreational guy and you're just going out pounding the laps, you can set idle, but again, keep in mind if the idle is set, the engine will decelerate much slower and it can cause you to pull deeper into a corner. So keep that in mind. So again, idle, turning this clockwise righty tighty, clockwise will raise the slide, increasing your idle. And that is the jam nut. And when you're working on carburetors, it doesn't take a lot of force. And I'm gonna get into that later. It's easy to strip out all the screws, um, the jam nuts, most of this stuff you should be able to lightly break loose with a with a screwdriver or a nut driver if it takes much more force than that um, it was probably over tightened or it's very corroded so keep in mind this is just very cheap casting on the carburetor so stuff is threaded into this car body it does not take a lot of torque um, and again don't you don't need to over tighten everything so idle choke fuel inlet from the fuel pump return line back to the tank vent lines so typically the vent lines will be routed upwards so you have one here and one here one on each side so vent lines you're going to take the vent line and route it up now, we've tried aftermarket vent lines, they just don't work so well. So typically the Makuni vent line or the Kian vent line works the best to fit on these nipples because I don't know if you can see it in that video or not. Sometimes the video goes in and out of focus. But these vent nipples are tapered. So if the, if the fuel line isn't snug or tight, it has a tendency to want to push your vent line off. Now it doesn't matter if it pushes them off. Um, it's not going to affect the performance of the carburetor, but it's going to make a nasty, oily mess all over your carburetor and all over the engine. Um, so when you have the vent lines on, you want to route them up. Um, and again, you don't need the vent lines on there, but it will slosh a lot of fuel out of these nipples. It's going to soak the carburetor. It's going to soak the engine. It's going to just make a mess of everything. Okay, now we go to the air screw right here. So typically this air screw is going to be set between one and two turns out. So to check it, I always do it in half turns. Half, one, half. So that's one and a half. You just want to gently seat the screw to check it. Just, and always count. Uh, if they, especially if the engine's running really good and you're not sure where the settings are, just gently seat it. And then that was one and a half turns. So we're going to go half, one, half. So one and a half. Gentle, 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 gentle. That's your air screw. And so what the air screw actually affects is the amount of air going through this circuit. So as you open this air circuit screw, it's going to allow more air through the carb, usually at, you know, low throttle position to half throttle, but some of the carburetors will actually carry over through the full range. Now, when you're opening up the air screw, allowing more air in, it's going to lean out the carb if we're talking about fuel to air ratio. So even though it's, monitor, it's, it's the air, opening it up allows more air in, which is going to lean out the carburetor. And again, usually the, this air circuit screw, um, some call it the idle circuit, it can carry all the way over through the full range on the carburetor, but generally from zero to half throttle of the slide position is when you're really going to notice this. Um, and again, if you, can, you mess with it, you can turn it in a quarter, open it a quarter. If you're not sure which way to go, turn it in a quarter because that will give you more fuel to air so it'll richen up the carburetor when we're talking about fuel to air ratio um, and if you do that half a turn or i'm sorry quarter of a turn you're running on the stand you don't notice the difference just set it back to where it was get out there and go do some more driving until you can find um, fine tune and feel those differences on the cart so 
make sure I didn't skip anything here. Inlet, outlet for your fuel, vent lines, vent lines, idle screw, choke, air screw. Now this carburetor, the nipple for the overflow, the float bolt overflow is still on, but this is plugged on the inside and we're gonna get to that here in a moment. So there's four Phillips screws. Now a lot of times these screws, uh, they're very soft. And what happens is the Phillips gets um, stripped out because you, you may use the wrong Phillips by accident. If you use too small of a Phillips, um, you can round out those screws. Now if you do that, you can buy van pliers. I got these from Sweet Tech Racing, their website shopsweettech.com. And the reason I like these van pliers, they've bailed me out of a lot of issues where the actual screws were stripped out on the heads. But these van pliers have multiple serrated edges. So you can get real, apply a lot of force to the outside, outside of the screw, clamp on, and then break it loose. Then once you do that, you can use your screwdriver to take it out of the carburetor body and then throw the screw away and replace it with the proper size. So don't use this all the time. If you have a screw and you're constantly using van pliers to take them out, come on, go buy new hardware. Um, and a lot of times, again, I'm a plug Sweet Tech a lot. I worked there for over 15 years. They actually sell Allen screws and I've never seen an Allen screw strip. So you can contact them and replace all your external hardware that you take on and off on a regular basis with Allen screws. So there's just another little tip. I got the vampires from Swede Tech, um, the hardware I usually pick up from them because I know they have it in stock. So four screws, remove the float bolt. And if you ever just want to do a main jet change, you can always just remove the plug here to do a main jet. To remove the main jet, six millimeter nut driver, six mil. Now this carb is gonna look a little different because this carburetor does not have floats. It doesn't have a needle and seat. So you have the main jet here, main jet. Notice the cap. Now on this carb, it can only go on one way. There's other carburetors out there where you can flip these upside down and you always want to double check the orientation that they come out. If you're not sure, almost all of us own a cell phone. Record or take pictures as stuff is coming apart so you know how it goes back together. That's six millimeter nut driver to remove the main jet. The main jet is right in the middle. And again, you can access it right here. So you're gonna remove the hat or the cup, the main jet hat or the main jet cup. Um, some call it a diffuser, a splash plate, a splash guide. There's a lot of different names for it. Now on a pump around, again, there's no floats, there's no needle and seat. This is a splash plate to help keep the fuel from splashing around the bottom of the bowl and sloshing around, maintaining. You really want consistency inside of a carburetor. So that way the main jet is always submerged in fuel. So this splash plate helps keep fuel in the lower half of the float bowl. I'm gonna remove that. Now you'll notice this one's all bent. So before I put this card back together, uh, I'll clean everything up and I'll flatten that plate out. But it should be flat and it is directional. So depending on who built your carburetor, you wanna just make sure that everything fits. So you see there how they have the nice little notch on the side of the emulsion tube body right there. It will not fit this direct, well, actually it will fit that way, but that's not correct because I'm forcing it. So make sure the plate comes off in the right manner. Fuel cell foam. If you have a pump around and you do not have fuel cell foam, you're probably gonna have bogging and hesitation issues or just sporadic running problems. You wanna make sure you have fuel cell foam. Uh, you can buy this from Jegs, but I think Jegs actually sells them by 12 inch blocks. If you contact Sweet Tech Racing, they do sell pre cut fuel cell foam. But again, Jegs, if you want a 12 inch block, you want to make sure you have it. And one side is cut out 
to go around the scavenger tube. And the other side is cut out to fit just like that. So that's how it should look. They look like floats, but they're not. All this is intended to do is to keep the fuel from sloshing around, aerating itself, um, and creating basically suction of air in the bottom end. It's very common on old carburetors that have been sitting with fuel in them that these just fall apart or rot. So you always want to check it, especially if you're new to the shifter stuff with the pump around carb. It's a new cart to you. First thing you should do is go through the carburetor. Um, find out what main jet you're running. Common sizes for main jets are typically 175 to a 190 main jet. That's your common CR80 main jet size for, you know, out here in Northern California. So again, 175 to 190. There's a lot of variables on, on what is the perfect size, but that's what you should have in your jet kit. And as I mentioned earlier, you have the scavenger tube here. And then this is your inlet tube. So this is on the other side of the inlet nipple. This used to be where the needle and seat used to go. So that's all gone. So this is where the fuel comes in. This is the scavenger tube. This is where it's basically the level. So imagine this is upside down. That would be your basic level of where the fuel should be. And then your pilot main jet. The needle actually goes into the main jet. So you see it there, the needle. Try. There you go. See, the needle goes through the main jet. Then you have your pilot jet, which is next to your main jet. Now, my eyes are getting old, so I can no longer read these jets. Um, unless the light is perfect, but the sizing of the jets are right there, right underneath the threads. Typically you want a 35 to a 40, and it goes 35, 37 and a half, or 40. I always use OEM Makuni. I don't use aftermarket jets. I know they only cost a dollar or whatever they are, but they're inconsistent. You always stick with OEM, whether it's Kian or Makuni, stick with the OEM jets. And on their main jet, the jet size is stamped on the bottom there. So it's right there on that surface. Main jet, six millimeter. Pilot, flat blade, screwdriver. Now you want a screwdriver that just barely fits in to the pilot bore. Now you don't want it real small, you know, like those little blue or red tiny magnetic screwdrivers, you don't really want to use one of those because the width of the blade isn't very long and it usually only engages with half of the pilot. And what you'll do is you'll strip out the top of the pilot, then it's, it's going to be garbage. So you want it as wide as possible, but fitting inside here. And once again, I'm going to plug Swede Tech because that's where I got this screwdriver from. They actually have a six millimeter nut driver. Um, that you can buy from them. And again, the vamp pliers I bought from them. So that's your pilot circuit, main jet circuit. Mm -hmm. I already talked about how the nipple, the overflow nipple was plugged. So it's irrelevant at this point because this is a pump around. All right, make sure I don't shoot these all over the place. Carb top. Now these are usually the two Phillips that strip out, are usually the carb top ones. Carb top with a gasket. Oh, I didn't mention, float bowl also has a gasket. Slide spring. Slide. Now the cut out the slide is going to face the front of the carburetor. So front of the carb, cut out the slide. Now on this particular carburetor, you can't put it in wrong. It just won't go. See, it just it just will not go in because that's the slot. There's a key there. Wrong way, won't go. Right way, drops right in. Should be nice and smooth. 
oh, that popped out. Perfect timing. That is the cable holder, the plastic cable holder, which goes underneath the spring. And I'll do another video on how to take the throttle cable off because it's a lot easier to show when it's on a cart. But this plastic retainer has a little tit. You see that tit? That's going to face up. You see the little keyway inside the slide? That tit lines up with the keyway. And basically all this does is it helps keep the throttle cable from accidentally falling out of the, the cable holder um, and then losing the throttle cable. Oh, now, now it doesn't come out. So I have these little pliers. Every time I see these at a dollar store or something, I always buy them because it's, I use them to hold the throttle when the cart's idling to warm them up in the morning. And they worked really well to pull that plastic retainer out. Now, this cable holder is missing one screw. I previously pulled the screw out just to make this video faster. So normally you would remove two screws. Again, it doesn't take a lot of force. Don't ever strip those out or you're, you're going to hate life. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, like I said, there's going to be two screws that hold the cable holder. So if you've never pulled a carburetor apart before and you're wondering why all of this is going on, pretend the ball of this is a throttle cable. The throttle cable is, the ball on the throttle cable is going to go in this end, in that slot, and then the cable comes up through the top here, and then that's going to go up and down, up and down, activated by your throttle cable. So make sure you have a throttle cable that has a ball in that will actually fit the cable holder there. Then we have your needle. We have your needle clip. Now you want to make sure the needle clip is nice and firm on the needle. If it's wiggling or anything else, then it could be your needle's worn out, your clip's worn out. It's a good idea just to replace both of them. Now a tip on how to take the needle clip off is I find a nice hard flat surface with the opening of the clip facing the surface. Then I push down on the needle. You're probably not going to see this in the video. Um, can I do it up here? No. Um, that's generally how I do it. Hard surface, then gently push down on the needle. And by doing it that way, I've never lost a clip. I've never launched them. So this one was in the fourth position. And the fourth position is counted from the top of the needle. One, two, three, four. So I just put it back. 